Hey, how are you doing? We're in June and June is Gay Pride Month. Uh, let me take a few minutes to tell you three reasons some LGBTQ people are not only out and gay and proud, but they're also mad. Okay, now as a Christian, you know, you want to have good dialogue and good relationships with friends and family members who might be LGBTQ. So let me give you a few points that might help you do that. Let me do that by trying to answer a personal question. Why was I so angry? Because I was. I mean, really. I was a very angry gay young man from the late 1970s to the early 1980s. Lots of my friends were, and truth be told, the gay rights movement was birthed in anger. And anger, I believe, has fueled it, oh, for decades now. It's the kind of anger which says, um, it's not enough for you to love me. You also got to celebrate me not just tolerance, approval. Well, uh, you know, on the one hand, there's a lot I can approve of about a lot of gay people, a lot I can celebrate about a lot of gay people. You know, during Pride Month, you hear about contributions made by lesbian and gay people. Well, there are more contributions than I can count. Oscar Wilde, Noel Coward, Peter Tchaikovsky, those are some pretty heavy hitters, aren't they? I still love Elton John's music. I still love Melissa Etheridge's music. Uh, Tammy Bruce is one of my favorite political commentators. Andrew Sullivan, also excellent. I think brilliant commentator. Don't always agree with him, but boy, the guy is sharp. Uh, Billy Jean King is a trailblazer. I mean, sure, you, you, you got to recognize terrific achievements and, and contributions made by a lot, lots of uh, lesbian and gay people. You don't have to celebrate homosexuality to celebrate the fact that there's a lot of worthwhile stuff that has come from the lives and efforts of gay people. But uh, Pride, at least Pride Month, it's about more than that. It really is a time when people are demanding celebrate homosexuality itself. And if you can't do that, and as Christians we can't, that's when people get mad. Why? Well, I know in my day, I had some very legitimate reasons to be mad. I mean, a lot of people at that time thought if you were gay, you were a pedophile. I can't tell you how many times I heard people say, if a man is homosexual, keep your children away from him. Homosexuals molest little boys. I, I never felt that kind of attraction in my life. I have never known one gay person who was attracted to minors and wanted to commit that particular sin. Uh, at the time I was openly gay, you could still get arrested if you were in a gay bar and just walked up to a buddy and put your hand on his shoulder. A vice squad officer could come up and say, hey, indecent uh, behavior, lewd conduct in public, we're taking you in. I mean, that happened. It happened all the time. And really, in my day, it was still kind of a badge of honor to beat up queers. It was for some young men, it was even a rite of passage into madhood. So those were all legitimate reasons to be mad. Were those the reasons I was mad? Not entirely. I had three accusers, the Word of God, my conscience, and the Holy Spirit. You got those three accusing you, man, you, <laughs> you got a problem. All three of them were interfering with my ability to enjoy my life as a gay man, and so I started getting mad, not only at all three, the Word of God, my conscience, and the Holy Spirit, but at anybody who came along and agreed with them. I was mad about the Word of God because I had studied the Word of God before I came out as a gay man, and I knew how to read the Bible, I knew how to rightly divide the Word of Truth, and I knew at some level that no matter how fancy I tried to get in the way I was reinterpreting the Bible, it testified against me. And if every mention of homosexuality in Scripture is negative, there is not one positive example of a gay and lesbian person, not one bit of instruction for gay or lesbian couples. The Word of God testified only to a universal, or I should say a biblical approval of marriage as defined between a man and a woman in a monogamous permanent covenant. I mean, I didn't like that, but at some level I knew it was true and that made me mad. I was also mad about my own conscience because my conscience kept trying to gently remind me, Joe, your decision to come out as a gay man was not based on you analyzing the Word of God and analyzing whether or not what you were doing lined up with God's will. You made a decision based on impulse, not based on a good conscience. And I wasn't too happy with the Holy Spirit either. He, he didn't seem to be any friend of mine. He got pretty relentless with me. I would consistently feel, when I was honest with myself, discomfort before God. Now, when your conscience and the Word of God 
and the Holy Spirit are testifying against you, you got a choice. You're either going to ignore them or you're going to yield to them, okay? You obey them or you try to drown them out. Now, for example, when Peter preached his famous sermon on the day of Pentecost, Luke says that after he finished his sermon, the people who heard it were cut to their hearts, cut in their consciences, and they responded the right way. They said, okay, so what should we do? Now, later on, uh, poor old Stephen was preaching to the Sanhedrin, a very convicting sermon, and those guys also were cut to their hearts, but their response was to try to drown out their own consciences, and they turned on Stephen and they killed him. They got mad. I chose that response. I got mad. I got mad anybody came into agreement with what the Word of God, my conscience, or the Holy Spirit were trying to speak to me. And when I got mad, now this is interesting, but it's true, I got hooked. I mean, I felt the adrenaline rush. I'm mad. I'm a victim. I have the status of a victim. I have the morally superior position. I'm enlightened. All you bozos are unenlightened. I'm pumped. That alone was pretty intoxicating. Truth be told, I think a lot of LGBTQ people feel exactly the same. I was angry because I was trying to ignore what eventually I knew I had to face. And there is a happy ending in all this. I finally did come to face it in early 1984. I'd like to talk to you about that next week. Meanwhile, hey, it's good seeing you. God bless.